Our second story out front, breaking news after heavy criticism. Ohio's Secretary of State has just ordered that all 88 counties in that state have to abide by the same early voting rules. And to understand why this is such a big old deal, there's a controversy and the map will help to explain it. Before tonight's announcement, these four counties had been denied extended hours for early voting. They included the big cities of Cleveland, Akron, Toledo and Columbus. And they were all four cities that voted very heavily for Barack Obama back in 2008. Remember I said they didn't get the extended hours? But there were two counties that had been approved for the extended early voting four years ago. Both of them went heavily for John McCain. You getting the idea here? So was this a coincidence? Or was it something more sinister as the Democrats were definitely charging on this one? I need some help. John Avalon, CNN contributor and senior political columnist with Newsweek and the Daily Beast, as well as Reinhan Salam, CNN contributor and co-author of The Grand New Party and Roland Martin, CNN contributor, all about to weigh in on this one. I wish I had more airtime for this, <laughs> you, two, you three. Roland, let me start with you because I know this is really near and dear to your heart. Mm -hmm. um, the, um, this really just all happened in the last couple of hours. So we're putting a lot of it together. And I have a quick quote that I want to read from the Ohio Secretary of State, John Houston, when he, um, he made this, uh, this decree. Today, I am leveling the playing field on voting days and hours during the absentee voting periods in each of the 88 counties. All Ohio voters will have the same amount of time, 23 days or 230 hours, to vote in person prior to Election Day. Uh, Wow, I, I wasn't expecting this to happen so quickly. He, Were you expecting no this choice. to happen? Why, did he cave? He had no choice because of the pressure that was being put yeah. on him and it was absolutely blatant how they, how they were trying to do it. And what happened was on the local boards, you typically had two Democrats and two Republicans. So it was two and two. So when they tied, it then went to the Secretary of State to break the tie. He wouldn't do it. And so he was, there was gonna be a massive rally tomorrow in Hamilton County to pressure him. He had to do it. But here's the deal, Ashley. This is only one of the issues. You still have that law that only allows military folks to vote early three days before the election, which is also shameless, which should be overturned as well if the Obama campaign has taken a federal court. Okay, so I'm going to ask you about that in a moment. And um, when I come back to this topic, I'm going to brand it as souls to the polls. Sunday <laughs> services. I'll ask you about that in a moment, but not before I just deal with this map still. Mm -hmm. uh, Ryan Salam, join me on this one. Tell me where, well, talk me off the ledge. Let's start that way. Get me <laughs> off the ledge. Why on earth would this have been different anyway? Why wouldn't it be uniform in a state? Why wouldn't every state be, I would assume, federally mandated to have uniform laws? It just seems crazy. Well, partly it could be because different counties have different fiscal positions, and that could have been why he weighed differently uh, on the different counties. But the, an important thing to understand about John Husted, the Secretary of State of Ohio, is that he is one of the leading Republicans who is critical of vo uh, photo voter ID laws. That is, he's been arguing with a lot of conservatives in Ohio who that's actually want there to be photo voter ID, and he's been saying, no, we don't need it. It's too strenuous. It's something that's going to make it too difficult for a lot of folks to vote. So the idea that he's someone who's really actively interested in limiting people's access, it, it's a little, you know, it doesn't sound quite right to me, given that he's taking this position that is heavily criticized by a lot of conservatives and also is shared by many of the activists who want to expand access. You, you, you make an amazing point with that. I did not know that he took that point. Uh, and it's actually been tough for him among Republicans. About Many the voter ID law. And you know something? What I found shocking about what you just said is that it seems to be real juxtaposed. And John, maybe you can weigh in on this with his position as the arbiter of the even vote. Because when those That's county right. election boards come along and they That's say, right. hey, we're split evenly on whether we can have extended vote, voting hours, guess who gets to make the final cast vote? He does. That's right. And his statement, I think, really gave the game away. He said, today I'm leveling the playing field. That's to the extent that it's an admission that it was an unlevel playing That's field right. before. And when you look at that map, it is hard to say uh, that there wasn't politics behind some of these county disparities. Ryan makes a great point about each county taking their own local economics into account. But the bottom line is, we all have a, should have a common interest in lowering barriers to vote and encouraging people to vote. And, and this sort of thing, whether he was forced into it, he did the right thing. Uh, and, and, you know, I'll take that. He leveled the playing field. Good for him. Too bad it took this okay. controversy. Okay, cue the organ music. Souls to the polls, <laughs> shall we? I'm coming right back to you, Roland, for this, because the other issue is this lawsuit that currently exists. Same state. We're not leaving Ohio right now. That's the Obama right. administration suing because that state has ended early voting the Friday before the election. So, you know, obviously a lot of people know that, that Saturday, Sunday, and Monday before the election have been, um, ha have been very important for a lot of people.
They work, they need the weekend to vote, and right. church services for African Americans have souls to the polls. Explain it and tell me why Sunday is it, so it, critical. Because it's the Sunday right before the election, and so you're telling people, let's get out to the polls. In 2008, an estimated 93,000 Ohio Ohioans voted in that period. Last year, the legislature changed the law, and its onerous voter suppression bill changed the law. More than 300,000 folks in Ohio signed signatures to say, no, it can't go into effect. We'll put it on the ballot. The legislature knew it was going to get thrown out. So they said, we'll throw out the whole law, the whole bill, except this provision. What they've said now is if you are in the military or a veteran, they're the only people to vote. So they're trying to make it sound as if the Obama campaign doesn't want people in the military to vote early. The Obama folks are saying, no, everyone should vote. No Republican, no Democrat should defend this law because everybody should have the ability to vote early, not just if you're in the military. Okay, so let me it was, ask you it was this. done precisely to target those people. OK, so early is how many days? Because by three days. Well, hold on. There's 35 days that I'm counting here. Well, actually, let the early right, voting starts on. October 2nd, October 2nd. Let me let me. <laughs> Let me actually quote the uh, Secretary of State again, Mr. Uh, Husted. He said, for the vast majority of voters, the early in-person voting period begins 35 days before yes. the day of an election and ends at 6 p.m. the Friday before the election. Why do we need those three days if we have 35 days? Why not? Why not? Again, 93,000. <laughs> no, 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 93, here's the deal. They allowed it in 2008. Why all of a sudden the change? If 93,000 people voted on those three days last time, why all of a sudden change it this time? What was the rationale? Yeah, why not expand the it, access? It, it sounds fishy. It, it's a bit stinky because it does certainly sound coincidental with those very important days, particularly the Sunday Souls to Pulse. Real quickly, John Avalon, another big development. I can't walk away from this segment before we talk. Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, big deal. We've been following the story out front. A judge today, Judge Simpson in Pennsylvania, declared their controversial voter ID law. He upheld it pushing back a challenge to the bill. Now, this is significant for a couple reasons. One of the things we learned in this court case is that the state's attorney general and governor said that there were no known cases of in-person voter fraud in Pennsylvania, which made a lot of folks say, well, what was the need for the law? In addition, you had the Republican head of the state legislature say on camera, much to That's his, right. I think, ultimate displeasure, that thanks to voter ID law, Pennsylvania will vote for Governor Romney. So the argument that this was about principled uh, uh, cutting down on fraud was challenged pretty convincingly in this court case. Nonetheless, the judge said that there was no evidence that it would result in immediate or in, uh, indefinite um, disenfranchisement. That law is upheld as of today. Well, so that's not, not the quite only what state. the gentleman said, you'll recall. He said no, that, that it, would let him, uh, it would let him win. That is, it would allow him to win. It would, uh, yes. That it would he not did, determine the outcome no, of the No, election. no, no. That, that because of voter ID law, but Pennsylvania you know, would I, vote I, I for... I think the important thing to right. know about Judge Robert Simpson and his uh, findings is that he determined after listening to expert witnesses that it would not be an undue burden to get access to absentee ballots. And he said that for those voters for whom there would be an undue burden, right. then it might be permissible to, to not have the ID the requirement for those voters. The Secretary yeah. of State took the stand and said, I don't know of any evidence of any well, kind well, there of malfeasance. Were, actually, there were a number of... This is the document. document. This Make is the document that actually they testified that there are no known cases of in-person voter fraud in Pennsylvania. And moreover, the Secretary of State did testify that at least three quarters of a million Pennsylvanians currently don't have photo ID. So it is relevant. Okay, and you know, it's not the last state to have this challenge too, so we're going to have this conversation again. Yeah. Thank you both, and thank you, Roland. It's still out.